this was an impromptu. I need to express myself. I need to say something. I need to let the people know that they are not alone. If they're feeling sad or mad or anxious, you're not alone. We're all feeling it. I think this is a collectively hard time for everybody. And be kind. Oh my gosh, be kind. Welcome to the Straight Up Intentional Podcast. This is your host, Diane, and on this podcast, we're going to talk everything faith, fitness, and mindset, and how to live an intentional life. What is going on, y'all? What is, literally, like, what's going on? Please tell me. (laughs) How are you? How are you feeling? Because I feel like mental health day was like a couple days ago and we all need a mental health break slash check in this moment at this time it's just a time of heightened emotions it's a time of heightened emotions heightened opinions lots of controversy lots of fear lots of lots of lots of lots of things And I can tell you right now firsthand that it has definitely taken a toll on me this week. And I don't like to even know anything. I'm like, please, I I can be the last person you tell. Please don't tell me. And I dove deep into what's going on in the world. And it has consumed my little brain. One thing you may or may not know about me is that when I was little, I was very emotional and I was always embarrassed of that. I was like the first one to cry, any little thing, like just an emotional little girl. And to be honest, I don't know why I'm saying was, I am an emotional person. I went through those like years of like young adult slash teenage years where I didn't care, quote unquote, But all it was was me trying to put a wall up and pretend like I didn't care, right? Or going to substances to block the caring to make it appear like I didn't care. But really, it was just me trying to find a solution for my feelings and not wanting to feel my feelings. One thing about me is you're going to hear rap lyrics on this podcast constantly because I'm a rapper. Like Kanye says, what's worse, the pain or the hangover, right? I used to choose the hangover because it was easier for me to deal with stress, anxiety, sadness, discontentment if I just didn't have to feel the feelings. So my solution is something that I don't do anymore. And um, this would have definitely been a week that I probably picked up a truly or two. And because I've been sober almost two years, yay, there's a celebration. There's always something to celebrate. Um, It's different, you know, it's processing your feelings and which is obviously healthier for your mental health. It's good to process your feelings. It's good to feel your feelings and get through them and really understand and be present and intentional about why you feel the way you do and then like knowing what the next step is in that feeling right and so this week because there was heightened emotions and like I'm a pretty empathetic person so like I said don't cry in front of me don't be mad in front of me I might just literally grab those feelings and then feel on myself because that's just how I work and operate. And my anxiety, I I don't have anxiety. I get anxious. I say that because words are powerful. I can get pretty anxious. So this week it's it I let it take over. And I've just had like a couple of bad days where I just don't want to do anything. I'm like ready to shut out, right? And I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. My normal routine's off, even though I still go to the gym at three o'clock in the morning because I literally cannot not. And the funny part about that is that's the routine, the part of the routine that I've kept. And that's when I feel the best is when I'm in the gym or like right after the gym, when I'm with my clients, my first 
5, 6 a.m. clients dropping off my daughter, I'd say it starts to plummet around noon. And um, there's a reason for that. It's because I wasn't taking the proper steps to protect my mental health. And the number one thing that I was doing for sure was scrolling way too much. The thing about these apps and having a cell phone and having the 24 hour news cycle is that sometimes we just know too much. And it sounds like, oh, what, you want to be ignorant? But like, think about that. We have access to information at all times. And sometimes, most of the time, it's false information. There are plenty of false videos right now being pushed out. There are videos that were like recreated a long time ago that are being pushed out right now as if they're happening right now. There are there's been things that you can see that are being staged or whatever it is. You just have to be careful with what you're taking in at this time, especially at such a heightened, emotionally heightened time. So I was definitely scrolling too much. That's number one. Number two is my default reaction, you know, now that I don't drink is to shut down and shut off. So like, I'm going to go into my room, I'm going to put on a stupid TV show, and I'm going to watch TV until I have to go back to doing my life, basically, until my next scheduled life event. Most of the time, it's my clients, which keep me going and have actually helped me mentally a lot because the routine is what helps my mental and helps me to not focus on what's you know scaring me and the anxiety. It's more so the downtime that I start to get anxious. But, um, I, you know, I just allowed it to overcome me and I, well, the first thing I did that I never used to do is I told somebody about it. I text one of my friends and I said, look, this is how I feel <laughs> and this is what I'm doing and this is what I've been doing. And like, I don't know how to turn it off. Like I feel sick. I feel tired. I'm exhausted. I took two naps yesterday. I don't even take one nap. Most of the time, like I never, I'm a very high, strung, energetic person. I run my life in a very energetic way. I always have lots to do. I'm like always working. And if I'm not working, I'm looking for work. Like I'm just a very high, strung person, borderline, I don't know, borderline something. But in the last few days, I've been the opposite. And that's how I know that that's something's wrong with me is First telltale sign of something being wrong with me is I don't want to do anything at all. I want to go into my bed and I just want to shut off. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to answer my phone. I don't want to look at the text messages. I just want to be in bed and not talk to anybody and not do anything. I don't want you to send me any TikToks. I just want to stay home and away from the noise. And I mean, that's not always a bad thing, right? There's times where you do have to kind of like say, hey, I need a day talk to you tomorrow. It's probably not good to talk to me right now. I'm probably not going to be either responsive or, you know, receptive to what you're saying. And, um, the other thing is, you know, I just turning off the phone sometimes. Um, I was consuming way too much information and that is again, not, not something that I like to do. I don't like to go into the rabbit hole. I mean, I can absolutely get stuck in a rabbit hole for hours, but I don't want to. So I usually don't even like allow myself to get that far. This seemed like something that I wanted to be informed about. And then, you know, of course the way we get informed is not through the news anymore, which let's be real. That's not going to tell you the truth either. So you gotta be very selective with what you believe in life, especially in this life, in this part of our life. You know what I'm saying? 2023. It's hard to understand what's right and what's not right and what's true and what's not true. However, I do think that overconsuming information is very detrimental to our mental health and we just have too much access to too much. And anybody can get on TikTok and start talking and make up a story or, you know, whatever. So there's just too much going on. Number 1, number 2, um, secluding myself, not telling anybody. So the first step I took was telling my friend like, Hey, this, how I feel like this, is what I'm doing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just letting you know, 
I, I got to tell somebody, you know, the second thing I did was obviously take, turned off my phone for a little bit, just not turned off, but you know, do not disturb, which if you know me, you know, I'm actually always on do not disturb, but really I wasn't looking at my phone and then getting up out of my bed and leaving my house. That was like probably the biggest thing of everything of yesterday where I was like, I'm telling you, I took a nap, watched like an episode of something, took another nap, watched another episode of something. And then I was like, okay, I'm in a funk. I know I'm in a funk. I'm feeling that I'm in a funk. I know I've been anxious. I know my anxiety have been up in the roof. Right. And then I need to do something differently. I'm me sitting at home, scrolling on TikTok. It's just not working. So I went outside and I took a walk. And, you know, the funny part about that is that I mostly took a walk because I needed to get steps in. We're in a challenge. And one of the things that I always tell people is to to get your steps in at least 7,000 steps, you know, aim for 10, minimum seven. So I was like, okay, you, you got to practice what you preach, girl got to get up and you got to go for a walk and you get those steps in. But of course, because I'm getting out of my house and off of my phone, I go into the sunshine and I get out there. It's a beautiful day. There is a light breeze and I live in the desert. So having a light breeze is like heaven. And it was like a cool, like, I don't know, 80 degrees. (laughs) And it just felt so good the night was beautiful. It wasn't night night yet, but it was like getting there. And it was the perfect like pre-workout to my 6 and 7 p.m. clients. It was perfect. It was exactly what I needed. Some sunshine, some quiet. Just let me not think about anything for just a second and just like admire the neighborhood and then walk around reset and then come back. And that's what I did. And I'm telling you, it made a world of difference. I got into my 6 p.m. clients, happy as ever, 7 p.m., even happier. And then was perfect amount of activity for me to get ready for bed, go to bed and try again tomorrow. Another thing I did was tell people, it's just telling people it, it makes a difference too, because you're actually saying how you feel, right? I think I have always withheld how I feel because I'm a strong Latin woman. I'm a strong Latina. We're known for being strong. And being strong sometimes means you don't tell anybody how you actually feel, right? Or you mask it because you're so strong. And it's not good for your mental health to always withhold how you actually feel. So, you know, besides my friend, right before bed, I told the girls in my challenge, like, this was how I was feeling earlier. And then I went for a walk. I feel a little better and tomorrow's a new day and I'll try again tomorrow. And sure enough, I woke up this morning. I said, okay, today is a new day. I'm going to conquer the day. I am going to do great today. No matter what happens, no matter what information comes my way, I'm not going to allow myself to get into such a fear mode that my anxiety overcomes me. And because there's no, there's no benefit of me being scared or anxious. There's no benefit. I'm not going to help anybody in the world if my mental health is horrible. I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm not going to be able to help my kids if I mentally am not okay. If all I want to do is go to sleep, then who's going to protect my children? Who's going to protect my my home? Who's going to, you know, how am I going to help anybody anywhere else if I'm in a funk myself? So I decided today, like, I'm not going to allow the anxiety of life, of this world, of TikTok to get to me, to overcome me. And so, you know, I made a plan, like, I'm going to go to the gym like I always do. I decided to do cardio today because I wanted to just move. I did some treadmill and then I did like a little like hit workout and it felt so good. And I talked to my prayer group. I asked for some prayers and, you know, I started to like, just have like a plan, like of how I would manage the anxiety today. And to be honest with you, me talking to so many people about it already set 
the tone for the day because now it's like I've acknowledged that I am feeling anxious and that I'm not okay. And I've told other people that I'm anxious and not okay. And now I feel better because now I'm not holding that all in and bottling up inside, which I've done my entire life. I've either bottled it up or I've grabbed a bottle and tried to forget about it. And that's not who I am today. I don't identify as that person. I identify as someone who is willing to feel their feelings, willing to work through whatever it is that they need to work through and see the light at the end of the tunnel and then change the mindset for the next day. So being prepared with, hey, you might feel those feelings today. So just know that you're bigger than that and that there's no reason to be scared. There's no reason to be fearful. Fear was a productive thing for humans, right? Fear was what told us to run away from predators, right? That's why we feel fear. We feel fear because it's a protective mechanism. But in this moment right now, we can't just run away from tigers. We're not just running away from elephants and tigers and, you know, snakes. We're scared of something that's happening across the world because we have so much information and we're not just scared, we're sad, we're mad. And if our mental health is crap, then God forbid it come to us or we have to, you know, go into our own protective mode. Us being down and out is not going to benefit us. We're not useful. We're a liability, right? We have to learn to to sh- not shut that off, okay? Feel your feelings, but have a plan and know that it's going to come and know how to overcome. And then just having a a, gra- a grateful mindset, right? Being grateful, I think, is a huge, because you can't be scared. I read something that says you can't be anxious and grateful at the same time. So, you know, today I chose gratitude. Today, you know, the first thing I did was, God, thank you so much for my beautiful children, my beautiful husband. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our home. Thank you for the beautiful school my daughter goes to that I feel safe with her there. You know, thank you so much for everything that you've done in our lives and please continue to protect us. And you know, thy will be done. Thy will be done. There are some things I cannot control. There are many things I cannot control because I'm just Diane. And me being just Diane, that I just have to accept that there's not me being worried or me being scared or me being anxious isn't going to benefit anybody in my household. It's only going to make it worse because now they're worried about their mom or their wife being anxious. So that's not the path that I want to take. I'm going to take the path of I'm so grateful for what I have and I will be done. I will be done. And me being scared and my mental health being crap is not going to benefit anybody. My job here on this earth, my purpose, my mission is to help women, right? To help women become confident in themselves, become understand that they have a purpose and they're here on purpose. And me not taking care of my mental health isn't fulfilling that mission. I'm not fulfilling my mission if I am not taking care of my mental health. So I wanted to share that because people just assume that you're a positive person. You've worked on your mindset. Like you never have a bad day. First of all, I don't have bad days. I have character building days. And yesterday and the day before that and the day before that, that was a character building day. This week was a character building week. I cannot be in control of everyone's happiness but I can control myself, how I work, right? And I can reframe my thoughts and I can reframe my words and I can reframe my beliefs so that I can help the people around me because that's what I was brought here to do. And I know that I understand my calling because I have that calling. I do have a responsibility to the people around me. My needs matter. And it's okay for me to ask for help, but I do have that responsibility of being a light around the people that are 
getting that light, you know, and also filling my cup, surrounding myself with light as well, focusing on what I could control, like not scrolling on TikTok so much for so many hours and not consuming myself with information that isn't going to help me, right? Being kind, understanding that feeling my feelings is fine. Um, I don't have to be perfect and I need to trust not just myself, but trust in God, my God, that everything is going to play out the way it's supposed to be played, right? And I just need to remember to, that I'm a, I'm a tool in the master plan and that my purpose again is to be the light and darkness cannot overcome light. These, these things that are happening, they're dark, right? This is a dark week. There's darkness happening, but light is brighter. And in this dark season, there's no benefit of me just diving headfirst into darkness, which is what the enemy wants, by the way but continuing to be a light and shining the light so that people that come to me have that light to shine, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm deciding that I am not allowing fear to run my life, faith over fear. I am deciding that when I am weak, he is strong. I am deciding that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That doesn't mean it's not going to form. It just means it's not going to prosper. And that, you know, just praying for the will of God and, you know, that I be used as a vessel, as a tool for the master plan. And then, you know, at the end of the day, everything's going to be okay. And if it's not okay, he ain't done yet. You know what I'm saying? Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you're feeling okay. And, um, As always, please tell me what you want to hear. This was an impromptu podcast. I wasn't going to record this or I wasn't going to record again this week. We just had an amazing interview with Chelsea, Momspiration. You guys can hear it now. Please do. This was an impromptu. I need to express myself. I need to say something. I need to let the people know that they are not alone if they're feeling sad or mad or anxious. You're not alone. We're all feeling it. I think this is a collectively hard time for everybody. And be kind. Oh my gosh, be kind. Be kind to people around you. It's so hard when everybody's mad at each other. And everybody wants to pick a side. And everybody wants to be me versus you. And that's just not the way it was supposed to be. That's one thing I can say with full confidence. It's not supposed to be me versus you. It's supposed to be y'all. Can we just love each other? Love thy neighbor. Okay. Love thy neighbor. Be kind. Be kind to the person at the gas station. Be kind to the person at the supermarket. Be kind to the person that's serving you food. Be kind in the freaking freeway. Don't forget to be kind. Everybody is going through it. Us being mean to each other, us fighting on the internet, it's not helping anybody. It's ruining your mental health, the person that you're fighting with's mental health. We have so much going on in this world. Be kind and live your life intentionally. Being mean is not intentional. (laughs) Have a good weekend, guys, and I will see you next week.